Working in the shop. Hey, David. Hey, welcome back. Yes. Been a long, you, you have a beard now? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> Trying it out. So we're working, hey? Yes, we are. That looks like the snowmobile I was building. That would be it. Yes, I see. So the upgraded tracks are here. Yep. Uh, looks like you got the drive, uh, the drive pin right here is done. Yep, we got all that in. Yeah. Had to do a little sanding. His tolerances are beautifully tight. Okay. So it's a little bit of sanding so that we can actually remove it afterwards. So we couldn't get the shaft through the bearing was the issue, yeah? Yeah. Well, we so, could tap it in, but if we tap it in, we got no way of getting it back out. So yeah, just in case. A bit. So this here is actually running the pulley wheel yeah. on the inside with the teeth that actually tooth right into this track system. Perfect. Yeah, very nice. I think it's a nice design. Kay. It shouldn't fail. So you're here giving me a hand because my back has been a little sore lately, falling behind yeah. on projects, and we all want to see the snowmobile put together. Absolutely. You know, hey, that Especially might... Especially with such a big motor. Well, we are switching, that's right. Okay, number one, I was saying Cal RC pit mat. Yep. Great for holding all of our screws because everything's magnetic, yeah? I use one at home too. Yeah, I, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and then the motor we've decided to change over. We did have the Pro 4, the Tekken, and thanks to one of the viewers that was watching, I can't remember his name right now, he said, listen, the Pro 4 uh, you're about to run is not gonna be strong enough. It's great, it's 10 scale, it's awesome, but you really do need an eight scale. And so what's the KV rating? Because I brought two. Well, we got a 1700 and a 2000, 2000. 2,250. Let's use this one, because yeah. it's gonna be bigger. It is a longer motor though. Just, I wonder if it's gonna cat. fit. Oh, it should be fine. Oh yeah, man, that looks great. Okay, both Tekken, both monsters. So we're gonna be yep. running an RX-8 in there, right? Yeah, there's one here, right here. Yeah, and uh, sweet. It's not sweet waterproof, combo. but I don't think we're gonna to need to even waterproof this. It should let... be under the cover just fine. Yeah. Unless it... we wanna try doing a water crossing. I like that idea. <laughs> Everything is frozen around here right now though, but uh, so we'll build it with that and uh, You go ahead. You keep doing what you're doing. I'm actually over here working on my summit dun, 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 dun. Everybody recognizes uh, this summit uh, from the one I had that had the floating tires uh, also for um, when I put the rat rod body on here that was also a lot of fun. And for those that remember and watched me run this summit around the mud, I actually blew one of the Kershaw motors that I had. Um, but these are so old and rusty now. These motors, dual motors, have been with me in this truck since I've done the rebuild uh, of the whole truck itself. Now these tires are RC four wheel drive, uh, they are aluminum ribs, uh, ribs, <laughs> rims, uh, these giant mud slingers, they're very heavy. So I do have MIP drive shafts, uh, all metal all the way around, uh, and the RPM um, arms, right? Because any type of weight on this machine starts to flex and I really need the strength of the RPM arms in here. So that's great. I did, where's my motors? Over here at the soldering station. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go, rebuildable motors. Uh, these are the 800s, I think, aren't 820, they? 820s, yeah. 820, thanks. Uh, so here's where the brushes pull out. David showed me this awesome little trick right Should here. Should we show them if they don't yeah. know? Oh yeah, I don't think a lot of people have actually seen these from Kershaw. And these are DeWalt motors, right? Yeah, these are out of a 18 volt DeWalt XRP drill. Yeah, the big drill. This is the biggest, baddest drill motor you can get that will fit. <laughs> so we got two of them. So most people don't know this, yeah. and I discovered this by accident, I told Aaron here too. So you see how that sits in there, there's no really way to get in there and solder to this tab. You Correct. can solder up here, but yeah, it's, it's not very, very hard. There's nothing to solder so to. So th these are these are removable. So you just take a small flat screwdriver, yeah. stick it in there, pop it out, slide it out, and then you have full access to do a beautiful solder job. Yeah, and you can rebuild. The brushes yep. go in there, no problem, hey? Yep. And Sweet. it's way nice. You can clean the um, what do they call that? The commute. The That's commutator. Uh, yeah, man, I'm glad. Yeah. Well, cool. Now I better get to soldering. Hey, get back to work. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, so looks like the track is on. Yep. The transmission has been installed. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, okay, so there's the transmission. Looking good, both the pulley nice wheels. Nice and beefy. Yeah, uh, you're saying it was CNC, hey? I, I'd we say think? so. 
I, I can't say for sure, but yeah, it's, didn't didn't see any stretch marks in the metal. Yeah, it's certainly a nice thick three millimeter thick aluminum. Okay, so yes, I've already soldered uh, or soldered depends on where you are in the world and how you say it. Uh, both of the wires, I actually bypassed the clips that could just clip onto the tabs, uh, and I wasn't going to. But as soon as I bent the wire over, of course the the um, the tab broke off. Not the tab on the actual where the brushes are, but the tab on the wire. So giving it a direct solder, uh, no problem, lots of flex. Uh, everybody has asked me when they've seen these before, where do I get these covers? Uh, this is actually an outerwear cover. Uh, I can get them at Kershaw Designs when I order my motors, or you can go ahead and order them straight from outerwear. Let me show you how it's spelled. There you go. But you do not have to go out and actually buy these filters. What these filters do is try to keep some of the heavier chunks of mud and rock out of your motor. It's not going to keep dirty water out of there, uh, but there are a variety of ways. You, people might be looking at you funny when you're standing in line with a pair of ladies' nylons in your hand, but <laughs> if you cut the toe off, zip tie it. Are you laughing over there? You are Maybe. laughing. <laughs> uh, you know, that is a good thing to look at. If you seal it up, the problem is, is that these motors do create heat. Uh, they do need to dissipate the heat. Uh, so Kershaw does have, uh, and, and you can just get them from Intigy or, or anywhere online where you can get the, the motor fins that fit right over and help get rid of some of the heat. I've got to get back to work so I can install them back into the motor or uh, to the motor mount. And uh, so we'll check back in a bit. Okay, so check out this pinion. Look how many teeth are on it. This is one of the pinions that actually came with the new motors. Check out the old pinion, which I ran inverted so it would fit properly on the uh, spur gear. Look at that. Yeah, it's like the teeth are almost worn off, but they're not, if you look at it. But the size difference is enormous. Look at this. Huge. So I said to David, hey, David, these are going to be way faster. Yeah? Yeah. And do you suppose that uh, four cell will be able to run something like this? Like yeah. on two motors? It's those, I have one of those motors in my summit. Yep. Yeah. And it's insane on two seven cell Nikomoto hydrates. Yes. So having two of them. And running this big of a pinion, it's going to be super fast. Yeah. I'm going to need different diffs. I'm thinking so. Or something, because I have not upgraded the diffs. It's probably one of the only things I've done. And I'm surprised that the stock diffs have actually put up with so much abuse so far. Yeah. You know? Hey, and I noticed that you, on the sled you're working on. Yep. When we went, we were wondering about the suspension. The suspension, because we got uh, upgraded suspension. At least on the website. They have uh, all the helpful tips and tricks, eh? Which just saved me a lot of time. Yeah, uh, because the instruction book, let's face it, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to follow, um, but if you lay everything out like we're talking about, you can pretty much kind of piece it together with the help they have on the website. Yeah. Which is way better. Well, you know, the instruction book, the guy that built this obviously knew what he was doing. Yeah. And he wrote it thinking in the mindset that we'd know more. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, never I think make that's... the mistake that the customer knows more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay, well, cool. So the right arms, flip that upside down for a second. Let's have this a seat. So the two arms that are there. Hey, I, so you see the spacers here? Yeah, that's the upgraded. And then that one doesn't have it. So people are laughing. They're like, that's not very much of an upgrade, just a little spacer like that. Well, but if you look this arm, how yeah. much I can bend it. Yeah. And then that arm there. Which is the upgraded arm. Yeah. Way stiffer. And it's slightly longer, so you get a little wider. That's spans. what we need the spacers for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, cool, man. Yep. Good. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Sounds good. Nice. Stretches out. Yep. How's the flex up and down? Pretty well, good. That'll do. Some people have never seen motor mounts like this or, or never really thought about why there's grooves in there, right? All the senior guys know, but this is to actually ha uh, help set your gap between the pinion and the spur. You just kind of make sure your lower uh, bolt is loose and your upper bolt is uh, able to move. Like this one's kind of tight down here. This one's able to move and you just slide it in. Now, normally I just use a piece of paper and get it in there, like even Kershaw's design here. Let's just uh, move this in here, one-handed. Move this out of the way. David, hold the camera there for a second. As we're setting the gap. 
A lot of people use business cards. Depends on what kind of gap you guys need to set. And move that in there like that. There, and then that kind of gives me the right amount of room so that this pinion is not gouging into the spur gear. Now, of course, I'd want to be tightening that up before I moved anything, but uh, that way we've got a nice little mesh. Would you agree, sir? Absolutely, and it's yeah. extra important with two motors because otherwise they will fight. Yeah, so there's some good, yeah, exactly. You don't want them fighting, right? So I'd leave that paper in there. I'd tighten up those screws and move it on. But there you go, there's two motors that are mounted. Check it out. We had to look at this. Everything's nice and shiny, all protected with that outer wears on, but we found with these uh, gaps here, we had to add little spacers in there because the pinions didn't seem to line up properly. Properly. But we added in a little bit of o-rings on the end. Yeah, and it gave us the proper gap So the pinion lined up with the spur gear properly if you don't then you're not getting the proper power transfer What are you doing over here? It's starting to get to the electronics now nice uh, Suspension and steering so now we just got to put the servo. servo in. I thought we were using a Savox servo. What's going on with that? It was. Where did that? The Savox one that we had was a longer servo, which yeah. is usually not a problem. Right. But in here, even this servo was touching the bottom. Oh, I see. Hey. So we needed one that wasn't so so long in the body. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna be able to make this one fit, or do we need another one still? I think this one's gonna do. Okay. Cool. Just figure out stuff. It's looking good, dude. Everything's coming together. Shocks are in place. Oh, looking good. Keep going. I'm going to tighten up the motors. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we've got the... It's, it's just pretty much ready for electronics. Yeah. If I understand the instructions right, which I probably don't. <laughs> but The instructions are hard to understand. They are. I, I, think, I, re, I think I rebuilt this thing three times. Yes. That's um, hence the long day and trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. But the steering is all tuned in. Okay. The suspension all cycles. Yeah. Um, we're ready for the motor. Very nice. And uh, the body, I think, is going to go together really quickly because that, that's simple. How was shock assembly for you? Shock assembly was tricky because okay. I, I lost instructions and I didn't know there was any. Yeah. And okay. then about two hours later, I was finished moving some stuff around yep. long done with the shocks yeah and i find this blue piece of paper i'm like oh the instructions yep so <laughs> I, re I rebuilt the shocks again because they were wrong no that's cool nice red uh springs that we're able to put on there yep uh they look good we did put these skinny skis on there for now we got the wide ones the down the road yeah wide ones uh for the different types of snow we're going to experience out here right it'll help us float just like snowshoes that's um, look at the difference yeah twice huge hey Yep. That's cool though, man. Everything's getting together. So we'll get the electronics in. Uh, and uh, here, put the green lid on it. Let's yep. see what it looks like. Well, we got the green bumper for it too. Nice. Yeah, the skid plate. Yeah. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Okay, wider arms. Here's the wide stance, hey? That's the upgraded suspension with the wider stance. It's quite a large machine for, for what it looks it like, you know? So, cool, dude. Should we set the old one beside it? Do you want to? One? Not yet, not yet. No, I think maybe next time. Okay. Uh, only because I want to keep it kind of a surprise. Sounds good. I like good. it. I like it. I want to check out the summit here because I'm almost done. Uh, just got to fiddle with it. Not much of an update because I've been back and forth doing a bunch of different stuff. Glad to get those Kershaw motors in there. Glad to get those pinions on there. You guys will see that I've actually zip tied those outer wares in place just to help keep uh, the dirt out. I wanted to run it backwards in the beginning to see if I could run this through the hole on the motor plate. But David pointed out as well, we wanted a nice tight fit in there. And I totally agree because the torque of these motors is going to be off the hook. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, I guess that's it. We're done. Uh, thanks for helping me out today, buddy. Yeah, boom. If you guys uh, want to see more, hopefully we've earned your subscription. There's lots of fun at the RC Spark Studio. See you guys in the next episode of RC Adventures. Bye.